All right, guys, so today we're working on this flash drive case. Uh, let me turn on the machinery first. Uh, this unit uh, came from somebody uh, who is following us on Instagram. So if you guys haven't uh, been following us, check us out uh, at HDD uh, Recovery. Uh, this unit uh, is a flash drive, a Lexar flash drive, green jacket. Uh, I believe it's a 64 gigabyte. Seems to be a common uh, device these days. Been seeing a lot of them recently. So um, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, troubleshoot the whole thing, find out why it's not working and uh, whether or not it's going to require a chip off procedure. A chip off procedure is when we remove these memory components, read them with specialized equipment that creates a binary data um, file dump that consists of everything that's inside of these two and then we perform error correction and uh, build data out of that uh, by applying different uh, data conversion elements that this controller is uh, performing. So let's uh, jump into it. It's not, a, it's not a difficult unit to troubleshoot. I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out at least what's going on with it and why it's not working. So looking at it, I can tell right away that it's a 3267L controller uh, that controller may or may not be loose based on these uh, connections. We see those two cuts right here uh, at the top and at the bottom. They make a very vulnerable spot for the flash drive. That's where it's going to flex the most. That's when it's likely to bend and break uh, if it was going to break. So let's find out what uh, we're dealing with. Prior to lifting anything, I want to see what we... Uh, are consuming so I'm gonna plug this into uh, my equipment and uh, this is gonna give us the readings for uh, how many amps this thing is taking in now when I power on my device through uh, this control panel here I want to see something uh, that will give me some idea let me clear this um, this is from the last case we can probably just quit and start fresh yeah this is gonna give us all new readings so uh, when we power on the device what do we see well we see that the amps are set to zero um, and here nothing is happening obviously because if amps are showing zeros that means nothing is powering on nothing is consuming anything right so uh, let's see what happens if we apply um, pressure to the device slightly just uh, while it's connected if we bend it back and forth does that do any different oh i saw something oh there we go hey what's happening are you seeing this well this force that i just applied to it look what that did right that force that I applied um, brought the device to function. So if I let go, look what happens to the amps. Boom. But if we apply a little bit of pressure, we get our stabilized 40 milliamps and it's good to go. So <laughs> to fix it, we're just gonna need some tape. I don't have any masking tape. But I had this duct tape. <laughs> I had this duct tape sitting from when I needed to seal up my uh, exhaust. Tape it down. And now let's see. Will the tape save this data? Yes, it will. <laughs> because look at this now. Um, like, look, we'll, we'll quit this whole thing. All right. Quit. Start fresh power up I'm gonna go into log so you can see that the actual unit will come up with proper identifications proper identifications serial number you check disk mounted 64 gigs available for us let's go I'll open up our studio as a Lexar device but where's the partition why are we not seeing any partitions so if we go into hex view
we see some kind of gibberish let's do scan of the surface oh there we go we found we found our stuff so it seems like there might be some corruption maybe when the device was starting to fail it was attempting to read then failing to read then attempting to write then not completing the write and therefore our MBR got damaged and it's now missing so what would I do in this case guys I would not run our studio on it uh, assuming that this device is so inconsistent uh, I would run a full image on PC 3000 make a full clone on it and then we can do whatever the hell we want with that image uh, that image is gonna have exact uh, replica of the device and we will have a full map um, of bad sectors that possibly um, exist on this unit uh, doing it with our studio we can still do it with our studio we can create an image with our studio if we wanted to the thing is this image it's not gonna be com containing the map of bad sectors uh, if they occur we will not know which files belong to uh, damage section and which files are good and that's something I have control with with uh, data extractor so I'm gonna just uh, shut it down for now and I'm gonna prep everything the same way but only image it through uh, data extractor instead of our studio that's it for now today is that's all there was guys uh, sometimes uh, getting your data is, is gonna be as easy as just putting a little piece of tape on it and calling it a day well like this case you can see that we brought everything back so uh, <laughs> not every case will be fixed with tape I promise you that but uh, it's not an exception sometimes you can make data and uh, recover data uh, with help of duct tape duct tape saves the day Thanks guys for watching this episode. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I am here making videos for you about data recovery. And uh, if you're interested in that topic, I suggest you strongly to subscribe to this channel and uh, to help uh, move this channel up and introduce it to more people. I would be super thankful if you would leave a comment below, hit like and share it with your social media friends that would be amazing thank you so much i'll see you in the next one